but it amplifies your chin, doesn't it? Do you think? Amplifies yeah, it. What amplifies how, my, how lacking in days. shape it is. Am I amplified? Yeah, it amplifies. Uh, am I kind of improving it with exercise, do you think? What? Well, see, he's gone full dysmorphia because the sun has come out. And we're going to be talking about that because the whole summer body bollocks is now rife. Well, that's what's in the title, exactly. summer body bollocks. Summer body bollocks. And um, it's important to recognise that it's a thing and that mentally it's a painful thing, but it's also important to talk about it so we can try and resist all the pressure to start getting a totally different body from the summer because guess what? We can't. <laughs> I don't want a totally different body, I just want a totally different chin. <laughs> um, uh, how are you all this morning? I hope you're good. The sun is shining and uh, Mark and I just have, we joked a lot on here about how Mark doesn't like the sun and we I have a sunny morning. Now. And we've, we've always joked about it, but we had quite an interesting conversation, Mark and I, when Mark said, no, he said, honestly, I know we joke about it and it's like, oh, I'm miserable and you're happy. But he said, it is crushing on for your mental health and depression. Uh, I hate it. Yeah, I, mean, it. It's so, I mean, it's not just kind of like, you know, kind of like a eccentricity. It's... I find it oppressive, I find it mocking, I find it insistent, I find it arrogant, I find the sun narcissistic. So we're going to talk sun about... Is, the sun is only <coughs> interested in itself and having its hat on. So we're going to talk about that, <laughs> mm. because just off the back of an article that was out today about the five signs of depression in men, but we just talked just more generally about that. Um, but first of all... Well, I mean, of course, on, on, in terms of the front of the papers today, the two big stories are, um, I'll start with the, you know, the, the, I don't mean least important because, of course, it's a death, but he was very old. Nigel Lawson, who obviously former Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, ardent Conservative, obviously, he was very much sort of, you know, one of those top politicians when I was younger and, and politically kind of going, well, hey, get rid of that, Joe. But, of course, uh, Nigella Lawson's father. Um, mm. And, you know, regardless of age, when you lose someone, you lose someone, we know that. Oh, God, from I mean, he's... Nanny Thelma, yeah, 93. I mean, he, yeah, was she 93? He's mm. 91, my dad's 89. And it is that thing, isn't it, that people do say, oh, well, what age? Oh, well, that's all right then. It's never all right. It's never all right, is it? No. Um, so that that's obviously one headline Sad. on the front of all the papers. The other, the other more... Tragic, but one would hope in some way, not rewarding, but providing some closure for the family, is Thomas Cashman, uh, the gangster slash drug dealer who shot the young girl, Olivia Pratt Corbell, in uh, Liverpool. Uh, yeah. It, uh, has been sentenced to 42 years. He didn't attend the court because in his own words, get this, how insensitive is this? Everything had turned into a circus. Everything had turned into a circus. So you don't have to come to court. I didn't know that. Well, no, but they are thinking of changing the law, aren't they? Uh, I think he got a more severe sentence for not coming uh, for not coming to court. Um, so obviously, this is the story of for anyone abroad who doesn't know this. This is uh, where he was chasing someone into the family home of Olivia's. Um, he fired uh, several times, I think, into the house. And as she came running down for comfort and support, and she was scared. Uh, he hit her, a bullet hit her, her mother, and then obviously uh, killed um, Olivia. Um, it's just, you know, it was a jury that found him guilty. Uh, the judge said his failure to come into court is further evidence of the fact that he shows zero remorse. Um, I mean, yeah, to, say, to say that it's a circus is just, is just awful. Um, his, his uh, not his agent, his uh, lawyer said that, this, this doesn't make sense, says that Cashman had not attended as he was aware that the Crown Prosecution Service were singing, we are the champions following the verdict in his trial. That wouldn't have happened before the verdict, so how could, they have, how could that be a reason for not attending? But, but also, I mean, what a thing to say. What, is he all feeling all sensitive about that? Oh, is that not very nice that they all celebrate? Good. That they celebrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you remember the weeks of watching that poor mother, just the anguish and just mm. 
I mean, like this amount of closure like that to put him away, but I mean, them and so many people impacted by that mm. action, that brutal action. And he's got all sensitive because they were singing We Are The Champions. Mm. Just terrible. Uh, in fact, MT says that the judge said that him coming in, not coming into court did not increase his sentence. Um, mm. It's uh, obviously, we, we've heard from um, Olivia's parents talking about how they just can't, get to terms or come to terms with the fact that they don't hear her chatting away. But I mean, so, so this, is, this is obviously the other oh big God. story on the, on the front of the papers. It took an inordinate amount of time to actually find him and get him. I mean, things I've seen in other articles talk about this curious detail, which is almost a code of conduct for gangsters and how, how this come guy on. broke it. I mean, you know, but there that is... That whole code of conduct. But there, is this, the, but there is that thing. It used to be around with the Cray twins, didn't it? And, and the great, you know, you know... But, but what, not, what was that? Not was, dobbing people in and all that kind of it, stuff. I mean, around something like yeah, this. Yeah, that's that's why it took so long to find mm, him, wasn't mm, it? Yeah, mm. just terrific. so I often wonder when I hear these cases. Would for you, obviously, one can't even begin to imagine going through that trauma. It's it's, it's an insult to what they've gone through to pretend you could. A, a good point, Eleanor Frayne. How do they come up with forty-two years? Yeah, it's I mean, a it's a sort of number, you know, how does she literally sit there totting up the, that time? Would a sentence? Say it was, you know, they're calling it a life sentence, but say it a life... Would you find any closure, not even closure, but s does meeting out justice genuinely heal in some way? I guess it must well, do, I do in some listen, way. I listen to a lot of these podcasts, Would you know, you? where... Let where and you do poll. hear over and over again people saying that um, families of, that it, it's tiny, but, but also enormous when the person is caught and put away. Mm. It is, it, but you, you then get on with the, I mean, you hear it time and time again, you then get on with the real work of dealing with the loss. Mm, with because grief, I think yeah. for a lot of people, the grief is almost stalled or the possibility of any sort of getting back to any kind of normality is stalled until mm. that person is. But I would imagine that is also a very holly, hollow feeling because <sighs> if you've been driving towards like there was such a there was such a campaign wasn't they to get somebody mm. to, to to snitch mm. basically mm. on him and to get him and i would imagine that, that 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 was a driving force that that would have in a way put shock absorbers in a bit on mm. what the actual grief and i imagine when he was put away that that would be like i was going to say I, I was going to say i think almost in a weird way now is it, there's a curious adage in uh, recovery and the reason i'm using this is because i think it could be apt for the family is you know when you get sober the great thing is you get your feelings back but the awful thing is you get your feelings back and i think in a weird way this closure of sorts yeah will mean that the feelings yeah. will... They, they're sort yeah. of... They know that there's an end to the narrative of finding the person, punishing the person, and now all they can turn round to, because they can't target it at him anymore, though, they, of course, they will emotionally and spiritually, is they, they will turn inward. So I think in many regards, a whole new level of grief will kick in now so um it's like when you you know when you're planning a funeral for somebody that hasn't been lost in such tragic circumstances the drive towards oh you know let's do this for this person and they would have loved this and we'll do that organization that goes mm, in mm. totally you see people don't they after the funeral just like crash yeah, yeah. dk1612 um, says i think until justice is served energies can be channeled into the court case mm, now the grieving will truly begin uh, yeah beautifully put mm. Very, very well. Uh, uh, a frog, I don't think it will help with grief. I think it's a focus for a while, but it won't yeah. take away from the grief. I think if he wasn't found, it would add to it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's I'm a... put in mind again of people whose children go missing. Yeah, oh, God. Exactly. And it, there's exactly. never a moment where you can really sit and have the grief. Yeah. Because you never know if they're going to come back. Absolutely. Oh, Lee Dunn. God, this is awful. I didn't know this, Lee. My mate was murdered in 2018. Oh, my God. Mistaken identity. He was only 36, has a daughter. They gang, the gang that killed him all got eight years each. What? One was let out after two years. No. This oh, is... my God. I mean, that would just open wounds massively again, mm. wouldn't it? Mm. There's a curious kind of... It almost feels... I mean, I'm, I have no sort of scientific proof. It must have been done for manslaughter. Well, yeah. I mean, it must they're, have they're... been mistaken. I, you didn't mean to kill him. But there's a curious aspect, <clears throat> isn't there, to almost collective killings where almost the blame is kind of... It's yes. like there's a set amount of years they can give. 
and they sort of distribute them amongst the kind of perpetrators, which is just I was listening weird. in, I think it's Nashville, that's completely, they don't have that law in Nashville. Which law? Uh, Manslaughter, man no. No, that if you can't say the person, nobody can be held accountable. Let Anyone that had any part of it, everyone would be done for murder. Right. Just let them talk. Um, yeah, because in other states... <laughs> I know in other states and here, unless you can actually get the individual, nobody nobody gets. Oh right. Gets so they done can't. They can't be a collective. I think so. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. But we could be wrong. Anyway, um, so so the, oh, that's good. they're very uh, lively out there at the moment, aren't they? Uh, maybe there's a particularly. Strong... I think it's because Chi Chi was away for a bit, and then yeah, she's so nice. Back, she's so nice of her back. She's so sweet. She's calmed down a little bit, apart from when you let her out. Um, this other piece I saw today, we're going to talk about, in a bit, the lasting effects of bullying from college or childhood, uh, what have you. So just stick, stick for that. And obviously, we're going to talk about summer body bo bollocks. But how to spot the five signs of depression. This was a piece in the mirror. And it was less that anything in this is sensationally new or something that we didn't necessarily know which is what makes me just curious. But it was, it was quite handy just to go through, this is the top five things that indicate depression in men. But I would spread this out and say this is depression in general. Um, and so what are those five things? <laughs> Shall we go through them? Um, anger and irritability. Men are more likely to experience anger and irritability as a result of depression. I certainly experience irritability. You do. You yeah, do. absolutely. You get so irritable. irascible. I, in fact, I see it as a sign of when you're going into a, a dark spot. Mm. For people that might not have joined us here before, Mark suffers with depression and um, bipolar disorder, and and so I'm always here as well, speaking for the people that you know l live and love with people that suffer this because it's heartbreaking, isn't it? If you're mm. if you're one of those. It's just fucking awful. Um, but yeah, irritability is a massive sign to me. You just, you get so irascible, but you don't see it. You don't see it at all. You think you're talking really normally, but you're not. And I suppose in many relationships, that's where a lack of empathy or sympathy can kick in because of course the person with depression is, is behaving in a way that kind of you know, yeah. rebels or repels any kind of uh, sort yeah, I mean, of you might not, some of you might not even know that. I mean, that's something that I found out. I just thought, yeah, it's just being horrible. Mm. But um, yeah, it, it kind of helps when you know, it's still horrible when somebody's being really irritable with you. Um, but, but if you know that, it does help. And you can then also say to your partner, not in a totally irritable moment, because that won't work, but just say, look, and I know that you don't realise you're doing this. Mm. It, you might not realise you're doing this, but I know you're sad, but it's coming out as angry. And I find that's... What's that? I find that... Is it, how do you feel when I say that to you? <sighs> angry. <laughs> no, no, I mean... I mean uh, Pissed off. <laughs> uh, no, I hear it and I recognise it. Because, but we've had years of because you're in, this. because you're embedded in an emotion. I think I think one of the biggest mistakes people make, and and it's not a mistake born of kind of in, a lack of sympathy. It's just getting on with things. Um, is that there's a choice involved, and so I suppose you know I think you can pull someone up who's going through a mental health dip, and say, look, you're presenting to the rest of us as a bit of a miserable. Dip. I don't think you should ever say us. Well, if I'd like to pull you up problem, on that, I tell you why. The problem because can it I feels just like finish? a group can of I just people finish? against you. Yeah, but, That's yeah, why I yeah. say that. But one of the problems, though, with it, and this is where my heart goes out to anyone living with this, is one of the problems with mental health is it will go inwards and more private and potentially more dangerous when That's you feel you when you feel that you're a burden, and so anger and irascibility holds people at arm's length, even though you don't want it to, and then you close off because actually you love the people that you're surrounded by and you don't want to kind of do that to them. So you do you do isolate it. I mean, these sorts of things. But it's just you? the worst thing you can do. Don't do that, guys. Lee no. just said he, he's lost so many relationships because when he's depression, he goes in, doesn't share, doesn't say, probably comes out with irrit irritability. But that is going to turn people more away. I'm telling you that now. It's much, from my opinion, living with somebody with depression, it... Personally, it is much better to say, listen, I'm really struggling. I'm feeling I might be a bit this, a bit that. Um, I need to be quiet or I might like a chat or I might do... And just state it. Mm. Now, that person that you're saying to might not be able to just drop everything and do it, but at least they've got a gauge of... Mm. Well, I always know where you are with your mental health. It's just whether you're admitting it or not. 
Because mm. sometimes you just won't admit it. I know, it's just because of... <laughs> um, to the other ones, uh, loss of appetite. Depression can affect our appetite. So, so can many of the meds that you go on. Uh, but I would also say... It can make you overeat. I was going to just say mm. that, yeah. Overeat is another Comfort means eat. of kind of like compulsive behaviour that tries to sort of resolve something. Constant... Oh, my God, that, the bloody noises of the city out there. Constant fatigue... Tiredness is a big sign of depression that's often missed. It can make everyday tasks such as going to work, taking care of children, preparing meals feel impossible. Uh, indecisiveness, um, I think also, again, indecisiveness, but also an overwhelming yourself with stuff to do can, be, can, can sometimes be two things. A loss, this I really relate to, and this for me is always the most fearful aspect. And I have to shut that door. Don't know if oh, it's I thought we're keeping it open it's, right the the it's a bit irritable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little bit irritable. Come in then, because they're going to want to come in again in a second. Come on, good girl. Um, loss of, um, loss of, 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 of things that you love, loss of joy in your activities. Loss of interest and favourite activities. Yeah. Joy. Um, and that, like. that for me, if I look back over the many kind of crises I've had with mental health, that for me is always the most alarming and discomforting because in some regards, those things are the things that keep you going in life. So if your passion for those goes... I'm just going to end the poll from... Uh, uh, would a life sentence, if you were Olivia's parents, help with grief? Two-thirds of you say yes, and a third of you say no. Interesting. Um, so what do you think, guys? Do you, have, do you demonstrate any of these? Do you have a struggle in dealing with, with any of these? Billy May Ruffle. Or it's hard when people don't any... understand mental health as well. Sorry, go on. Or, or struggling with somebody that is struggling with mental health because it, it's it's... You know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. Mm. It's, it's not easy for anyone. I mean, I always say to Mark, you know, because Mark will always say to me, well, I'm sorry I'm feeling this way. And I'm just like, we don't say sorry. I just feel so bad for you that you feel this bad. But I also do recognise that it is a lot. It's mm. a lot for me as well when you're, when you're struggling. But it's not as much as it is for you. See, a lot of people... I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm so glad, I, I mean, I'm so grateful mm. that I don't suffer like that. Edward Bevington, lack of sun can lead to some effects for your information, Mark. Just saying, well, I entirely disagree, for me, for me. Um, when there's cloud cover, it feels like protection. And it feels like, it's almost like chicken licking. Do you remember when the, the sky... Yeah, but a lack of vitamin D from sun... No, 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 vit you know, no, I get that. But vit if I could get vitamin D any way other than the sun, that would be really delightful. Um, and so, uh, for me, the sun is an absolute... Uh, you get used to it, because, of course, we get into the summer months and everyone's happy and everyone's, you know, oh, isn't this lovely? And everyone's in parks and everyone's eating, you know, packed lunches and pret a and sitting in squares and all that kind of malarkey. It makes me want to just dig a hole and become a mole. But what I... If you don't mind me saying, what I notice about you, and I don't know whether this resonates for anyone else that actually it's every change of the season. Because I notice when we go into winter from summer, mm, you get you get the shift because mm. then it's about people being cosy in pubs and it's about, it's almost like, mm. it's almost like the Can't Instagram win. joy. It's a bit like that. Sometimes when you're talking, it's almost like when people talk about when they see Instagram joy that everything looks so fabulous for everybody else and that, is that a depression thing? That's what I. That's how I see your depression sometimes. Is that you can't see the light in you or the joy mm. in yours, but you see it. You perceive that everybody else is having that, rather like, you know, the social media world where so much of what we're looking at appears to be people being mm. the the happiest, the most in love, eating the most fabulous food, having the best time. That's not the truth, and mm. also that's not the truth in life either. Mm. You know, it really isn't. Um, the sunshine puts too much pressure on people to be sunny. The sun pisses me off. I'm with you, DK1612. Um, but what about when we go into winter and you feel that in winter as well? I, well yes, it's almost like the geographicals affect you seasonally. It's the seasonals. Yeah, you've got the seasonals. Well, it's seasonal something sad, SAD, isn't it? Whatever that seasonal, seasonal adjustment. Yeah, that's what the guy it, what who was just yeah, saying, sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so, yeah, those are the five signs, or how to spot the five signs. So it doesn't mean all of those mean you're depressed, yeah, or any of those specifically Karen. means you're depressed. Karen says she gets a real heaviness in her chest and down to her stomach, and it really helps to 
of your money. Oh, bless you. Bless well, you. you know what it helps us as well? Sometimes when we feel down, we think, oh, I've got a two coffee money. And then we say, do you know what? We always feel better afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Connect, connecting. Only connect. Connections are so important. And I think that's another thing with depression, isn't it? You want to retreat. Mm. You want to isolate so you don't have to have any fear at all of how other people are going to perceive you. Mm. And I get that. On the, on the occasions that I feel low in mood, I don't want to do it. But I'm not feeling it all the time. Mm. And that that's that's just it's just so hard, isn't it? Mm. Um right. final comment on this, Sean. Anyone who's suffering with it, can I give you a big Sean Tucker, I get really irritable and more emotional when I'm struggling, and it really affects my close relationships. Having arguments with people when I'm down just makes me want to isolate and be on my own. Yeah. That's it. And that just exacerbates it, doesn't and it? And in a weird way, that's your mental health doing uh, press ups in the other room. You know, isolating yourself, removing yourself, making sure you're on your own, making sure you, you can feel worse. And and sometimes, you know, the problem with that when you have mental health, I don't know if this resonates for anyone, is how enticing that is in a dark, twisted fashion. To, that, just to, isolate, just to isolate, no, to isolate and hold everyone at arm's length. It's really, really odd. Because then you can just feel everything that you feel... You can go to as dark as you want yeah. without without the added pressure of other people looking to you for yeah. whatever their needs are. Yeah. Or, 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 or letting people down. Yeah, and that's where it becomes really hard for the people that love those people mm. and live with them. It becomes it so difficult. Yeah. Okay. Um, summer body bollocks. Uh it's not really a peg, but this story kind of stood out to me and Nadia, which was about a Scottish woman who died in Turkey during a gastric band oh operation. My God. The woman from uh, Shannon Bow Bow died from the 28. procedure. Twenty-eight. Uh, you know, a gastric band, I, I guess just done badly or not done properly. Well, no, it, it, no, but it could have been done totally properly. There really? is risk with every is single there, operation it, you ever have. I right. mean Can I ask the question, what is a I've never understood what is a so gastric, gastric band? So a gastric band is it's literally like imagine an elastic band that goes over part of You're your joking. stomach to so that you have less stomach to fill. You're joking. A gastric that... bypass is when they cut away a huge part of your stomach so that you will ne a gastric band can be taken off. So you can lose weight. Also, people can overeat and expand so the gastric So it's like literally band. tying the end of a balloon. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know it was that but simple a But a gastric bypass. I wonder if this was a bypass and they've put band. Gastric bypass is a big operation. And um, I, I have really strong feelings about that. Well, I was going to say, presumably, and I have heard you mention this before, I just, I just realised I hadn't really asked what they are. Um, if your problem is emotional eating and compulsive eating, then this is a recipe for disaster. Because if you have been using food to medicate, like when you use alcohol or drugs to medicate and you come off that, usually people go to something else to medicate their feelings with. And you, there can be so many different things. I mean, ADHD can cause over, overeating. Um, um, Thank you. Edward. Emotional, huge emotional problems can cause overeating, and that ain't going to be fixed mm. by reducing your stomach. And there was um, ages ago, wasn't there? There was an article that we saw about the increase in alcoholism with people that have had some people that have had bands and gastric thingies because mm. they they can't eat to suppress their feelings, so they start drinking oh, right, alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think. I can understand why people get to it because often it's a state of emergency where somebody actually is so at risk from diabetes or heart attack or stroke because they're so overweight mm. that it's seen as like a quick fix. But, you know, this is a 28-year-old girl who, it, I don't know, she looks like, what, I don't know, what, 16, size 18, something like this, going for a gastric band. This wasn't to save her... her medical health was it this was about trying to get to a size no well, yeah i mean that's that's what i was going to talk about this relates to so we related this to summer summer body bollocks because of the immense pr i mean is that another aspect of the sun that's depressing yeah i mean I'm, is well, it no, not but inordinate pressure well, then, on body image well then it we, we saw this article we weren't really going to talk too much about this particular case because we don't know the ins and outs of it but it just got us talking about how it's begun. The summer body bollocks has begun. I woke up this morning. Now I'm, I'm, you know, as you know, I've worked a lot. I, I have huge acceptance of my body now. 
But even I looked at the sun today, I thought, God, I haven't really been doing enough. Like my summer, I mean, I've lost weight and I'm losing weight for my health. I don't weigh myself. People just keep telling me I've lost weight and that's great. But how much am I building my muscle? And, and I, that is always about my health. But today, the stinking thinking got in and it wasn't about my health and it wasn't about longevity. And it was about, oh, what's my stomach going to look like this summer? I've thought that every single fucking summer of my life since I was about 12. Mm. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. I came down, and I hope you don't mind me saying, and Mark was in a, a very similar place. He was feeling really dysmorphic. I mean, I think you're absolutely gorgeous. You work out all the time. I, I love your body, but there's no getting through to that because we all do it. Men now are, are getting just as fucked up as women because of all these, like, you know, you've got to have the six-pack, the eight-pack, the... 24 pack. Can I just say, I hate six packs and eight pack. Can I just say that? I find them so unattractive in men. I get rid of mine then. I, I really, really do. It, I, I, it's not for me. It just feels aggressive. So I just want to say that because not every <laughs> single woman wants an eight pack. Not Every single it's man wants to size 10. <laughs> well, 10 I don't know. That. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so that's like the first thing out the way about like what, what the opposite sex or same sex, depending what your what your thing is. So part that, and then what are you left with? What, what are you trying to be for whom? Like if you were all right all winter... With your, with your body, just under clothes. If you were all right with that, what is this? Is this about the hundred people that might be around the pool? Is this about... I think it is. I think it's about... I think it's about... It's, it's principally about... I mean, look, the psychology... No, what is it? Hang on. The psychology of dysmorphia is about yourself. Yeah. But I think there's also... The aspect of it is massively... Which is massively important is whether it be... Uh, on social media, the pressures to sort of present a life that isn't, you know, isn't imperfect. But also, I do think it's round the pool, on the beach, self-conscious. But well, why? yes, you can ask. That's the important thing. But we thing. all do it. <clears throat> yeah, I know that. But that doesn't mean that we have to carry on doing it. Because this is... the I lost years with my children of jumping in and out of the pool. Mark used to do all of that because I felt so self-conscious about my body. What a fucking outrageous fucking waste of time for people that I don't know that might think something of me. They might think, oh God, she's got a big bum or she's got a jelly belly. They might think, oh, I love a jelly belly. But we don't know what these people are thinking and what the fuck does it matter? That's what you have to get to. You have to get to what does it actually matter? <clears throat> now, I would say it matters hugely to feel <clears throat> able to move around, to feel healthy, to feel vital, to feel energised, to eat well, to exercise. All of that just makes life better than if you're sat in day after day smoking, eating shit, drinking loads of booze, of course. So I want a healthy, vital body, but every day I work on myself saying, what does it matter what anyone else fucking thinks about my body? Yeah, but the problem with all of this is, is it's all well and good saying it, but how you do it is nigh on impossible. It's I mean, not impossible. It, I mean, I've heard you say this for many years, but it doesn't change. And also, I have worked and worked and worked, and I'm not suggesting at all for any minute today... Uh, that, um, you know, I've got to peak fitness or anything like that. But one, <coughs> as you get older, you are forever chasing, ever diminishing returns because you're literally running opposite, For, up, up a set of escalators. Yeah, who? Even if it's one, one's... I, so, I, For who? To not look repulsive to when you who? strip off on to a beach. who? I don't know. Everyone. Everyone on who? the beach. Who? So everyone on the beach. You could possibly now, or you, if you're in the same thinking ruin your whole summer imagining what somebody thinks about you when actually it's just what you're fucking thinking about yourself. So you've got to sort out your own horrible, horrible situation in here because it's you that's letting that person live in there and speak to you like this. Tell them to fuck off. I used to have 20 voices in there. I've got two that pop up now. Just two. 
And they came up this morning and I said, I recognised it and I said, I know what I'm doing here. It's uncomfortable. Because if you say, I'm not going to think like that, it will come up. It's uncomfortable, but just go back to what you know, Nanja. Go back to what you know. What, what do you really know about this? It doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter what other people think. Are you a good person? Are you a good friend? Are you a good parent? Are you a good sister? Are you a good friend? Are you good? Ask yourself those things because that does matter. But actually, if you've got cellulite or you haven't got an eight pack or your arm's a bit wobbly, what the fuck? Kaz Rowley, 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 sorry if I pronounced it. Well, I presume it's one of those two. Uh, good, quite, good point, Mark. Do you ever look at anyone else and look at their faults? No, no, I, that's interesting. No, I don't. It's almost so like one is so self-obsessed with where yourself. one looks. Yeah, 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 of course. But you, you, it's more about self than it is about looking at others and making any judgment. And you're right, you know, the vast majority of people aren't doing that. But, but, but... No amount of hearing how rational what you're saying is, it changes anything. Can I just doesn't, say something? It doesn't even touch the science. Can I just say something? Right. Nothing will change for as long as you don't want it to change. You literally, I see you, shut the fucking doors and bolt them as soon as I start talking. Because you, this is something you hang on to. This self-loathing serves you. So you've got to work out how is it serving you. Yeah, I know, I know. But you're six it's years true. old. I mean, this is something that no, I no. reject you for years, isn't no, it? No, no, so, I know. This yeah, is, yeah. But this is but why if I some, So what would you say to someone who was sitting there saying this to you? 10 years ago. Well, why would I say 10 years ago? Because I'd be sitting there agreeing with them. Why can't I share what no, I've no, no, learned? No, 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 I agree. But what I'm trying to say is... Because <clears> 10 get, years ago, I'd go, oh, yeah, me. let's not go out. Let's just yeah, stay okay. in. Yeah. Let's put a coat on by the pool. What's mm. the point of me talking about that? Mm. I, want to, I want to share that it is possible. I'm telling you, I was so bad. I was... This was just the whole time it stopped me taking parts in movies it stopped me taking so many unbelievable chances that I was given and I said no and nobody ever knew it's because I felt this body was inadequate recently I saw a clip of myself in a film years ago I was crying all the way there on the plane I was crying before I went into the thing I hated myself I looked at those pictures after I was like you were fucking gorgeous this is never about the way we look. It's about the way we decide to see ourselves. Honestly, honestly. Charmaine <clears throat> McNally, I could cry listening to you both. I know you're speaking the truth, but in your own head, it's debilitating how you feel about yourself. When nothing fits, you don't feel comfortable. And 77% of you are saying you feel stressed about showing your body in the summer. That's over three Listen, quarters. Listen, guess what? So do I. But it doesn't disappear, but it's about learning a way to talk to yourself. It, you have to. I do not believe in saying, just love yourself. Fuck off. If we could all just love ourselves, none of us would have any problems. It's, we can't just love ourselves. We can't just love our body. We can't just be body confident. I am not body confident. I just have the daily conversation with myself where I say, I'm not doing that to me today. Mm. I'm not doing that. And what I, the other thing that I say is, try this. Next time you're feeling like that, imagine it's your daughter or your friend or me crying to you, saying these things. And what would you say to us, right? And then quickly turn it back and say it to yourself. Try and be the friend to yourself that you would be to somebody else. I know you're not listening to me. I, I am listening. But why can't you take I am that listening, one step? but it is, it is a, it's a titanium wall of kryptonite that's unassailable, unget-roundable, and if you can't stand yourself, you just don't stand a month in Sundays at this point. So do I you, hear what you're saying, it's an impossibility. But do you hear what I'm saying? I just said... No, I hear your I advice, was, but it's I, just... I literally yeah, 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 turned I, down I so it. much no, in know, my life because of it. So it can happen, but mm. you have to want change. If you don't want change, nothing will happen. And also... You can't be in a rush. You can't be impatient with it. You've just got to just do it bit by bit, like tiny little bits. Mm. Like today, if, if those feelings rise up and for you, just imagine that it's somebody you love saying the same to you and then whip that advice around and give it to yourself. Okay. Um, Eddie Marson and bullying. 
Um, get it from work. No, yes. no, 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 it's not. But I, I'm just trying to also, I mean, I, I can't be convinced and I think it's important well, that I just... because I think, hang on, I think it's important that people hear that someone else is possibly feeling like they're feeling, which is that kind of philosophy, which is totally right. I hear how right it is. I hear how appropriate it is. I am nowhere near, I'm not even in the foothills of getting there. And, and I think it's just sometimes important that people hear someone else saying, ah, you know what, I, it's an impossible thought I, at this absolutely. point. It's not, I agree it's absolutely. something to aspire but, to. But not so impossible that you can't listen to something. No, 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 like, no, no, I, I just want to do this. I know you want to rush me on, but I just want to do this quickly. Okay. I'm going to say to you now, there's no way, Mark, I'm going to go I'm going to go out this summer by, by the pool because I, my stomach is so disgusting. What would you say to me? Well, of course, I'd, no, say what that, would you say? I'd say don't be so ridiculous. Would you say, say, what do you mean ridiculous? I'm really feeling it. I really do. Well, I, I mean, feel I upset would, I would about it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go through no, the extraordinary it. detail that I would go into well, to make sure say? that you felt all right about yourself. I'd talk about how something. attractive you are. i talk about how it's in the eye of the beholder. i talk about how you're not really concerned about what other say people think. Say all that yourself. Yeah, OK. I can't. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not ready to. Okay. Say that. Not okay. you can't. Say I'm not ready. Okay. That's a better way to say it. Okay. I'm not ready. Yeah. Okay, so Eddie Marson, I love this story. Uh, you found this, Nads. Eddie Marson expertly calls out friend of college bully who tries to mock him on social media. Eddie Marson, fabulous actor, starred, as he reminds us, in over, and for good reason, in over 120 movies. He went to the London College of uh, London College of Printing in in probably Elephant and Castle when he went there. Mm. Oh yeah, that there it is Elephant and Castle. Yeah. Um, and whilst he was there, someone he was mercilessly bullied, and someone flicked his ears and said he had big ears. And anyway, a friend of the person who was the primary bully of Eddie Marson at college went online. Um, and said this, do you ever scroll through Netflix when you think that you found a film to watch, all of a sudden you scream, oh, fuck that, it's got Eddie Marson in it. It keeps happening. Um, which is, uh, and then one of the actor's former fellow students at the London College of Printing wrote, many years ago, my oppo, what's that? Oppo was at the print, print college at the Elephant. Marson came late to the class and sat in front of Russ. The lecturer said, this is Eddie, be nice to him. And Russ, this person's friend, flicked his ears from behind and started singing, Eddie the Elephant packed his trunk. <sighs> After reading the post, Eddie Marson replied by saying, yeah, I was bullied relentlessly at printing college and it was awful. I remember your mate doing that and I'm glad you still find it funny. Wow. If he wants to know how I am, he can just Google me. I have a beautiful wife, four wonderful kids, and I've been in over 120 films. How's he doing? I love that so much because the best revenge is success. But I, really also is. Know, I also know that that will have gone to the heart of him. And you know what? I've always thought about Eddie Marson specifically. There is a... And it's what makes him a brilliant actor. There is a sort of... There's a sort of shield... Do you know what I mean? He's sort of, even in every role he plays, there's a kind of, mm. he's been buffeted by stuff. So mm. it goes back to that thing of, you know, when you're bullied at school, it reaches through your life. And like he said, like someone else said, actually, underneath it, A, there's the awfulness of this person doing it when mm. they were at college, but then someone to repost now uh -huh. and find it funny. But, but you know what I love? I mean, I love everything about this post. But what I love is he says, I remember it and it was awful. Mm. So it's not even like, no, 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 no. Well, you might have thought that now, but I'm doing well. He acknowledges mm. that it was painful. Mm. And I think that is really something quite big, isn't yeah, it? Because I, I don't know if I would want to say that to the person that believed me. I really got something from that. Yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. Or no, it's okay to say, to, yeah, yeah, that I, I, I felt vulnerable and it was awful. Eleanor yeah. Frayn says, a short episode <clears throat> of bullying can destroy a child's self-esteem so quickly, but can take years to build back up, exactly. Susan Doody, uh, I think I was born wearing a sign OK to bully throughout school during various abusive relationships. I changed in my oh, 40s when I realised I was worth more than Good someone else's you. opinion of Good me. Good for you. It can lead to PTSD, says Edward Bevington. Laurel Nichols shows that that person, the bully, has not changed. No, and I just, I mean, I really don't believe in this. You know, kids have to just put up with bullying because it will make them a stronger person. I don't think it does. I think mm. it just gives you just, it's Absolutely. just overwhelming. Like you say, it never leaves you. Never leaves you. Um, okay, a couple of things. Do you want to just have a look for the, we've got the winner um, of the, uh, if it's come through, maybe it hasn't come through. Oh. Uh, no. no. Michelle hasn't. Okay, so uh, 
No, Michelle, no. Michelle sorry, we we'll, do, we'll, it, ha, we'll announce it tomorrow. I yeah. think it, I think it's better, we'll announce it tomorrow. The, the winner morning, of the, the voucher winner. from the Curly Cooks yeah, yeah, on yeah. Saturday. So uh, apologies for that. Um, and also uh, Emma Walsh's mum's birthday, Emma Walsh's mum's birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Emma Walsh. Emma's mum's birthday. Mom. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. you. And it's also Shelby's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Shelby. Happy birthday to you. Is Shelby, are the Shelby's in Peaky Blinders? They are. Are you a Peaky Blinder? We're the Peaky Blinders. And just quickly before we go, what I was talking about there with body, with body acceptance, it is not easy and it's not as simple as just saying that line. It is years of changing that direction of thought. It's taken me 10 solid years of just trying to get me to go in a different way. And if you just keep repeating kind of things to yourself, eventually you get there. But there is no quick fix. And I would never suggest that. Um, yeah. Guys, lots of love <coughs> and uh, we will see you on the morrow.